Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to Cram and Kirk on Sunday the 14th of March in the year 2021. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Announcements as always are available on our Kirk website and just to draw attention to two or three that I would like you to take particular note of. The Congregational AGM and Seminar is held today at 11am and there are details of how to get into that Zoom meeting um, on the announcements. Sadly, we report the death of one of our elders, Mr Willie Prest, and our prayers and thoughts are with his family this week. Min Hunter's funeral service details are given in the announcements as are details for the Big Brew Coffee Morning which is on Saturday the 20th at 11am. The Cram and Scout plant sale, we're beginning to think about that and you can pick up all the information on the leaflet. Let us worship God. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His love is eternal. Repeat these words in praise of the Lord. All you whom he has saved, he will rescue you from your enemies and has brought you back from foreign countries, from east and west and north and south. They must thank the Lord for his constant love, for the wonderful things he did for them. They must thank him with sacrifices and with songs of joy must tell all he has done. Thanks to God for this reading from his word. Let us pray together in our collect for the day. Almighty God, you are the word beyond all words, the calm at the core of the storm the energy that sustains the whole creation, the power of love, which brings new hope to the world. Breathe on us with the power of your spirit that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is the season of Lent and we've been marking the Sundays in Lent by lighting these beautiful purple candles. The first Sunday we remembered temptation, the temptation of Christ and our temptations. On the second Sunday, Tom Cuttle told us about the refreshment that's available during this season. Last Sunday we were thinking about the cross of Christ and our own cross. And today we will come to the fourth Sunday later on. Thirsty for you. 
reading today is given by one of the men in the Maidley family. He's going to be reading from John's Gospel. Let us hear the word of God. The reading is taken from the New Testament, St John's Gospel, chapter 3, a reading from verse 14. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its saviour. Those who believe in the Son are not judged, but those who do not believe have already been judged because they have not believed in God's only Son. This is how the judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds are evil. Those who do evil things hate the light and will not come to the light, because they do not want their evil deeds to be shown up. But those who do what is true Come to the light in order that the light may show that what they did was in obedience to God. May God bless to us the reading and hearing of his holy word, and to his name be all glory and praise. Amen. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, one God, with us today and forever. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. I wanted you to think of a word today. Which word would you pick out from that text? The one which jumped out at me from the text is the word love. I had an interaction with a homeless man this week who phoned into our office looking for £20 to support him until he got his next payment from the government. He got angry with me because I didn't give him exactly what he wanted, exactly when he demanded it. Loving is not straightforward. Another minister told me this story. He said, I was asked to conduct a funeral service for a young man. Wayne died age 22 from drug abuse. He had lived for periods on the city streets poorly washed and fed, and had there a whole network of friends, a community which I knew very little about. At the funeral, as well as grieving families, neighbours and friends from earlier days with whom he had grown up, there were many of the street community. These largely outnumbered the other mourners. The minister continued, as I commenced that service, suddenly I felt out of my depth. I felt no common ground with the street community, and they made it obvious. They felt none with me. A group of young men lay back in their seats, chewing gum, eyes up to the ceiling. Their body language spelt disdain. More than that, outright rejection. I ploughed on with the service, inwardly praying for help. After a time, I stopped looking at the direction of the young men. I could not cope with the apparent irrelevance of what I was saying to their lives. Somehow, I got through that service, but felt largely useless. Later, a member of the mourning family came to me and said, did you notice the body language of 
these young men. I replied I had, and I spoke of how inadequate I felt in the situation. They responded with what they meant was the change that came over the young men during my address. I said I hadn't noticed any change because by that stage I'd stopped making eye contact with them. The mourner then explained how at one point in my talk they stopped chewing. They looked at me. They sat up straighter and they listened intently. It was the point at which I spoke with passion about God's unconditional love for us all. The way each life is treasured and valued by God, no matter what others thought of us, no matter what we thought of ourselves. I said it was not our business to judge Wayne, that he remained at all times one of God's children. And I quoted John chapter 3 verse 16 and 17, that God was love, love and love, and yet more love, love that never ended, not even at death. Evidently, this message touched something in them where nothing else in the service had. Our gospel today gives us that same word, a different setting, a different congregation, but the same message and the same need. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. My unease is that those of us who are listening today may have heard this so often that they may treat it as ho-hum, yawn. If the utterly amazing Easter is gospel, love of God for every one of his children becomes ho-hum, then we are all, all in trouble. God so loved the world is a very important text. In Sri Lanka, the most famous theologian of all time is a man called D.T. Niles. He spoke in Edinburgh during the 1960s, but he was famous in America and right round the world. He puts the thought this way. It is the world in which Christians live. It is for the world that Christ died. And it is about the world that God converses with his church. It is the world in which Christians live. It is for the world Christ died. And it is about the world that God converses with his church. If the conversation is about the world, what does love look like in the world today? And I'm going to finish with three brief stories. In St Andrews, Scotskirk, Colombo this week, with incredible commitment and fortitude, one elder with a small team of supporters has managed to get the Columban Healthcare Authority to open a new halfway house to let a group of Buddhist and Muslim women find their way back from long-term spells in hospital, then in a short-term facility, back into life, to work and towards living with their families. Love looks like this, caring for those in need. Number two, if the church has been the main organisation, most influential organisation in this Cramond community for over 1,000 years, then shouldn't we be really proud to be part of a community where the school phones up the minister 
to say that a family have lost their house due to a fire and can we help? That family have stayed in the manse. Isn't love responding practically when help is requested from people in the world? And the third one. One of the church members here told me this year that despite a huge loss, her spouse had died, that she could still feel a warm blanket of loving support from her neighbours and from this church. She told her family that she was not afraid. Isn't love supporting those who are grieving? Here is today's text for you to reflect on again before Simon plays for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the son into the world not to condemn the world but that the world may be saved through him. Thanks be to God for his love, for his world, and for his church. Amen. And now Simon is going to play a reflective segment on God is love, his the care. delighted to have the Maidley family and to have Angela taking part in the service today. Angela is going to share with me in the prayers of thanksgiving and the prayers for others. Let us pray. Most loving God, we thank you and praise you for the joy of hearing that society is opening up once again after the pandemic and that a return to church may be possible. We give thanks for your Son, through whom our eyes are open to see your glory on every side. Through Christ the sun shines brighter, and the midnight stars beckon kindly. The whole world is full of your glory. Through him the music of the mountain streams is more delightful, the singing of birds becomes sweeter. The whole world is full of your glory. Through him, great architecture is ennobling and a Mozart serenade is moving. The whole world is full of your glory. Through him, loved ones are more precious, strangers become more lovable and our enemies are made worthy of respect. The whole world is full of your glory. Through him, prayer is a pressure. The scriptures are opened up to us and your guiding hand becomes more discernible. The whole world is full of your glory. Through him, the church is renewed and invited to imagine new opportunities and the talents of others are our joy as well as theirs. The whole world is full of your glory. We give thanks 
for all those who have worked in Cramon Kirk to keep our church alive and active during these difficult times. Edith, our session clerk, Louise, our secretary, David and the team at the halls, Alex and our children's team, all of our organisational leaders, Diane and Kathleen and all who visit, the elders and the members who care for their neighbours. Today, fellow Christians, I ask you to pray especially for those who, for whom we have hold scant respect, the ones we tend to write off as no hopers. I ask you to hold them before Almighty God, because God is love and loves each one of them just as much as each of us. God of the whole human family, we pray for drug addicts, dealers, alcoholics and gamblers. Hear our prayer. We pray for violent teenage gang members, for rebellious kids who run away from good homes, those who milk social welfare system, and those who scam others out of their life savings. Hear our prayers. We pray for people who gravely abuse their positions of trust or power, corrupt lawyers, doctors, politicians, teachers, police officers, prison officers, and ministers of religion. Hear our prayer. Most loving God, please do not allow us to become defeatist and bitter. Make us more eager for redemption rather than retribution and encourage us to employ the tough love of Christ in the affairs of our neighbourhood and our nation. We hold all of these people and groups before as we pray with the whole church in heaven and on earth, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So I hope you have worked out the word for today. The word I was focusing on is the word love. I want you to take that word and I want you to carry that word. And I want you to live that word this week. Let's share in the benediction. The Lord be with you and also with you. Go now in the peace of Christ our Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you.